Hey guys, Nvidia has reasonably quietly launched their refreshed version of RTX 3080, and we were lucky enough to get our hands on one of them. On the surface, it looks like there's just two extra gigabytes of video memory, but we wanted to check if they've changed anything else. As you may have guessed from the thumbnail and intro, we took this card completely apart, so stick around to see what's inside. Also, if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. Before we open it up, let's check this card in its full glory. This is an ROG Strix RTX 3080 OC edition. In the 3080 lineup, this is essentially the highest end card you can pick up, especially if you intend to do some crazy overclocking. Also because Asus has not spared any expense to make it good. Needless to say, in the current market, these are being sold for crazy money. And as far as I know, there's actually no MSRP. So we can't even collectively scream at Nvidia for the prices we're being charged. Regardless of this, let's press on. This card has all your standard bells and whistles, with 5 ports at the back, 3 display ports and 2 HDMI 2.1 ports. On the side, there's a switch between performance and quiet mode, RGB, as well as 3 8-pin power connections. We actually dug a little deeper and found some differences between this and the original 3080. Apart from costing considerably more, this card now features extra 256 CUDA cores and two extra RT cores, which equates to just shy of 3% improvement. With the added memory, this card has now 20% increased bandwidth and also just over 9% higher TGP. Let's dig deeper to see if there's anything else that has changed. For this, we'll use our trusty iFixit screwdriver set as there are a few different types of screws to use in this card. First part is to remove screws holding down the main cooling assembly. This is using the four screws within the GPU retention bracket, as well as the two screws on the side. At this point, the card is being held by thermal pads and paste, so you have to carefully pry it open. It does take some pressure, so do it slowly. Next, there are two cables to remove. Both of them have clips, so you have to get in there to unclip them. After you've completed this, he may actually be finished, as now you have full access to the whole board. For those who plan to water cool this card, you'll need to check with your block manufacturer as some of them use existing backplate. In our case, we'll go further, but first let's check out the components. There is a nice amount of thermal paste on the die and well applied thermal pads all over. Once all of them have been removed, we see a fully populated board with memory. If we look at the original RTX 3080 from Teardown by Debauer, you see that the memory slots 5 and 6 are blank. This is where we get the extra 2GB of memory, and while looking across the whole board, I could not find anything else that is different. Since we'll be using this card in an upcoming custom water cooling build in a very cool case, we'll carry on with disassembling it even further. By the way, make sure to subscribe as you don't want to miss that video. To remove the backplate and this metal frame, we need to remove the five screws next to the video outputs, as well as the remaining screws on the back. It is a little bit annoying to have two different types of screws here, so make sure you have the right tools. Once all of the screws have been removed, the frame comes off. Now you have to pull on the board again as there is thermal pads holding the two pieces together. I was actually pleasantly surprised how thick the backplate is. I can't quite explain it, but I find this board to be really good looking. What do you guys think? For those who are interested in this card's performance in an original state, we'll put it through its basis on our AMD test bench, which features Ryzen 9 5950X. All games were run on the maximum possible settings and Rift Breaker as well as Godfall have ray tracing enabled. At 1440p, this card just shreds through the games without really any problem. Going up to 4K, you can still max settings on most games with some spare frame rate. The only exception being Total War Free Kingdoms. For those who may be interested in getting this 3080OC, here's a quick test on thermals and acoustics. During the test, our room temperature was 26 degrees Celsius and the noise floor was at 30.5 dBA. The measuring distance from the test bench is around 50 centimeters. We turned on Firmark stress test to warm it up and let it soak until it is stabilized. In this graph, we also have some extra cards for general comparison, but they're not even in the same league, so bear that in mind. RTX 3080 is hovering in mid to high 60s, which is clear indication that there's still plenty of overhead for overclocking. At the same time, this card only hit 43.5 dBA during the test. It is certainly not silent, however, for this performance, it is very reasonable. For those who are planning to overclock it, I recommend getting a pretty beefy power supply. While running Firmark, it was pulling just shy of 400 watts, so with moderate overclock, you could pull 450 or more. To quickly wrap this up, it is evidently a high-end card and it should be treated as such. 
While street pricing is insane if compared to the previous generations, it is about right if compared to the market price over the last year or so. No one's thrilled about it, but you can't really do much about it either. If you can afford a card like this, then get it. It is a really good GPU. If you want to check it out further, there's a link in the description below. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.